Hello everyone, it's Tuesday, March 22nd, 2011. It's Harp Tuesday! Um, I missed the last couple Tuesdays, uh, which I'm, I'm very sorry about. I'm actually thinking about making this a, a bi-weekly show, so once every two weeks, just to make sure that that doesn't happen again, but we'll see. Um, I do have coming up some pieces that I'm working on. I'm going to do some in-depth looks at them, and I think I'm going to spread that out over several episodes. So that should hopefully give some good material for the coming weeks. Speaking of pieces that I'm working on, I'm performing this Sunday in Shemanus, which is a smallish town up island on Vancouver Island in BC. So if you happen to be in Shemanus on Sunday at 2 o'clock on the tw March 27th, then definitely come and listen to me and, and say hi afterwards. Uh, a, a nice program planned. And uh, you can find more information about that on my website. So this week, what I'm going to talk about are trills. And just sort of do a little discussion on, on trills. And a trill, of course, is, is when you're playing, you know, you'll have a little trill sign over a note so that you're playing that note and the note above it. And trills are kind of awkward on the harp, especially if you compare it to the piano, because on the piano, you can just be trilling away merrily with one hand, no problem, sounds great. And one of the problems that the harp faces is that these strings keep vibrating, keep making sound until, you know, they either stop, which takes a long time, or until you you muffle them. So in this case, we don't have any time at all, right? We're, we're just keep placing these same two strings. So there is a definite tendency to, to hear a little bit of a stopped sound. So it's harder to make it just really nice and even and crisp. Uh, and especially the faster the trill is, the more chance, you know, if it's really really slow, we don't have to worry too much about, about stopping. Well, we have to worry about it, but it's a lot easier. So let's, uh, let's, let's look at doing a trill. And the, and the most effective way to do a trill is with two hands. This is the easiest way to get a really great sounding trill that's loud and even and reasonably fast. So that's done by just playing two and one with alternating hands. And um, so the first thing to think about is we'll, we'll just place the right hand, 2-1, and, and here's a great place when you're doing it starting and doing it really slowly is to think about this wrist movement. When it's going fast, if there's any wrist movement, it's just going to be a little, you know, just a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a bounce. But while we're doing it slowly, this is a great chance to get away from the string and remove some tension in the wrist. So, now let's just think about that because we have this problem of stopping the strings, as I said. So normally, we want to be placing, if we have some extra time, we want to be placing in that extra time. And what can happen, oftentimes, is you're starting to learn to play the harp. There's so much stuff going on. So let's say the left hand's got some really slow, I don't know, harmonics or something. Something like that, really slow. Not a problem. But if the right hand's doing a bunch of stuff, so we, we play this, you know. And then what can happen is that maybe go Is that we're, we're caught up thinking about the right hand and then suddenly 
at the last second we realize, oh, what, what, what? left hand's got to do something. And it ends up being late or, or, or rushed and oh, we get a little tense or something. So normally we would, you know, we'd, we'd, go in, we'd go and find that next note. We, we could find it in that time that we have so that we're not rushing to find it at the very last minute type of thing. So that's sort of typically what what we're wanting to do in that we're wanting to place a little bit in advance if, if, if it works out. But one of the problems that can occur with that is, let's say they're repeated chords. Say we place early we're hearing that sound get stopped of course there's all this sympathetic vibration that's happening down here but we're hearing that stop it sound so in something like that we do have to delay our placing until the last minute and that's what we're doing here with these trills is delaying the placing so that means we want to practice being able to place, to find and place our fingers on the strings we're going to play and then play as quickly as possible so that that, that action of finding and then playing becomes almost one action. So it's almost as if on the piano, you know, we just boom, you find it and play it in the same motion. We're trying to find and play these in the same motion. So. You can practice, you know, slowly. Okay, we're going to place these two notes. Everything's good. You play. You know, a little bit of wrist action. And then, okay, yeah, I know where I'm going. I'm going to try to place and play and make sure that's feeling firm. Make sure that that's feeling confident and not, oh, oh my God, I don't know. I, oh, I did get the right ones, but it's all feeling a little awkward. Or anxious so and then we're gradually gradually increasing the speed to the point where the amount of time between our fingers touching the strings and between them playing is very short and and we can also practice just the, the single finger don't even worry about the thumb yet because the two is the first one to play. So. And then. So that waiting until the last moment to place. Um, as it gets going really fast, you may even find that you're naturally delaying the placing of the thumb a tiny bit. I, I would let that come naturally. I wouldn't tr try to do that because in general, you know, in something like this, we do want to place both the fingers before playing the first one. But it can get a slightly cleaner sound if you're kind of playing, playing that two before one because, of course, at the point that one actually gets on the string, it is stopping that string and there, it's going to be the time between stopping the string and playing it, it's going to be slightly longer if we place them both at the same time because we have to play two first. But I wouldn't worry too much about that. I just worry about being able to delay that placing until the very last minute. So then, it, you know, once you've got that in hand, and again, practicing slowly and, and building up that confidence there, then we can start to
as you can hear, it's of course easier as it gets faster, the quieter it is, right? It's, it's harder to do a, a loud, fast trill than it is to do a quiet trill. Um, some things to play around with are starting the trill from the from the thumb, from the top note. And hearing that as the as the start of the trill in your head as you're as you're going. You could play around with triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three. You know, emphasizing that triplet, one, two, three, one, two, three, which will shift the emphasis onto all um, four, well, not fingers, but all four points of contact. Um, to, to work on evenness and and yeah so just again it's a question of these was one of these things like broken chords like anything where once you got the basics down once there's that good fundamental base it's just a matter of practicing it slowly and, and building up the speed um, so there's the trill now of course what happens about music where I don't know left hands noodling away <laughs> And, you know, the right hand's having fun. And then suddenly there's a trill in the right hand. Well, left hand's still got stuff to do. What, what, what are we supposed to do? We can't, you know, left hand can't be doing both things at once. So then that calls for a one-handed trill. Now, the type of one-handed trill that I do is, is just 2-1. I'm going to talk about another type of one-handed trill at the end of this, but... Um, this is, I guess, I would say slightly more common in North America. And what you're doing is you're just, you know, going from two to one to two to one. Now you can hear the difference between You know, I can't get anywhere near as fast and loud and even. Um, you can work on this just by, you know, playing two as you normally would. One. Wrapping around. Finger closing. You can throw in a slight little wiggle as it gets going. Um, I, I'm generally not an advocate of, of doing much wrist movement this way you know we, we come off the strings but not really anything this way but a little bit of that um, can be helpful in this in this trill um, and often it will it, it'll get the effect across you know it's not as good as the two-handed trill but especially when we got the left hand moving around I'm uh, looking at there's a spot of the uh, towards the end of Mozartish's Songs of Nymphs, where, what have we got? Uh, you know, we, it, it gets the, it gets the point across. Um, there's some trills in the slow movement of the handle, for example, and often what will be done with this one hand trill is a measured trill. So with this, we're often just trilling away, not really paying attention to how many actual notes are going into each beat. A measured trill is one where you are doing a consistent number of trills, a consistent number of notes in each beat. So, you know, you might be trilling over a little right hand passage and you might do, say, two to every one note. Something like that. Uh, if it's 
you know, if the left hand notes are really slow, you might do four. Um, something like that, or, or uh, six, or, or however many, but too often. And that can be... Uh, In a, in a sort of a long extended trill section, especially in something like a slow movement, that is usually a good option because it, it, you can choose a speed that's not too fast and then it helps maintain that even sound and, and gets us that sort of trill effect. So that's something to keep in mind where you're doing a certain number of, of trills, usually, usually, usually uh, matched up to what the left hand is doing. Um, hopefully it's doing some consistent uh, rhythm. So, uh, let's see, left hand trills, there are very occasionally, and uh, generally in Baroque music, uh, Bach, or I know the, or at least the Widensall edition of the, um, C.P. Bach Sonata has a left hand trill, uh, though that's optional. Mm. I mean, you can leave it out if you want to, right? Uh, I don't really have a good left hand trill. Um, you got the big six strings, the ringing away. It's, it's really hard to get that effect that you could on a keyboard, um, you know, on a harpsichord or a, or a piano, which is going to be in general a lot cleaner. A and usually, you know, I think the only left hand trills I've encountered are in Baroque music. So I wouldn't stress too much about them. You know, it's something you can play around with if you want to. But it's... Uh, play around with it if you if you want to and have fun with it, but if not, it's, it's you know, don't feel too bad if, if it's something that's pretty hard. So, and of course, maybe, maybe it's fine. Maybe it's, maybe you, your left hand trill works really well. So more power to you. The final thing I want to talk about is a different way of doing a one-handed trill. This is something I think that's more common in Europe, and it's something that I work on periodically, but I, I, I'm, I've never been happy with where I've gotten, but I'm sure I will continue to work on it. And, and some people have an incredible one-handed trill this way. And what it is, it's using all four fingers. So uh, I'm going to start with the thumb. and. You start by placing the thumb and the fourth finger, play the thumb, place three, play the fourth finger, place two, and of course this position here with two beneath three is one that almost never occurs, um, so it may feel a little strange. Play three, place one again, play two, oh, place four again, back to where we started. Another way to think of that is that we're just playing four, three, two, one. So, you know, we could start with four, four, and three on the, on the strings. Place two. Place one. Back to four. placing as long as we can. So basically we're sort of placing as that previous finger is playing. So I haven't been working on them. That's about as fast as I could get right now. It's, you know, it's, it's It's not, for me, it's never, I've never gotten it to the point where it, where I'd want to use it over this 2-1 trill. Um, but I have heard people who, who can do an amazing one-handed trill and just sound with this technique and it sounds, you know, it sounds fantastic. So definitely something to play around with if you don't, if you haven't seen that before. Um, there's a spot in the Carnival of Venice variations, the Godfa, where... Um, where essentially you're doing that because four, three, and two are trilling away on the. Whoa. 
and um, the thumb is bouncing around playing the tune. Um, and that's fun. Like I can, I can, when I, I've played, I've performed that piece a number of times and I can get it to the point where I'm happy with it, but, um, it's always, you know, it's always sort of right at the level of how fast, right at the maximum level. It's not, I wouldn't want to play it any faster. So, um, again, here's a place where I think you can feel free to sort of let your wrist and hand move around. Move around as as feels right, and I would definitely love to hear from any of you if, if you have a good one-handed trill uh, using four three two one. Let me know how you know what 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 tips do you have? What uh, what is helpful for you when you think about that and when you work on that? So would love to hear from you. Um, well, somehow this is twenty minutes already just talking about trills, so I think I'm only gonna say goodbye. Um. Again, apologies for missing the last couple of weeks, and hopefully we'll have a bunch of great content for you in the upcoming weeks. And of course, if you're in Shimanus on Sunday, March 27th, come by and listen to me and say hi. Okay, cheers.